consumed about a quarter of this roll of black PETG filament. Took about 20 hours uh, to print that much filament from that roll. And there's no sign of any wearing on these carbon fiber tubes as of yet. And what have I been printing in black PETG? Well, another set of hypercube parts, of course. Let's take a closer look. Check these out, black PETG, 41 pieces of the Hypercube set. This black PETG is one of the darkest blacks I've ever printed regardless of filament that I've used. It does have a glossy surface, but it is extremely black. This is Ararum's uh, black PETG that I'm, that I'm printing here. And as you can see, being glossy, it's going to bring out all the details and imperfections, I guess you could say, of the parts that you're printing. When your printer is tuned, then you're going to get really great prints out of your printer and it's really going to show, if I can get that shimmering in the light there, how your printer can perform. I'm just grabbing a few random pieces here just to, to show you what sort of quality I'm getting out of my uh, 3D printer. And being a glossy a glossy plastic, it actually makes it quite easy to show you as well. I've been printing with the carbon fibre, this entire set was printed with the carbon fibre on the X gantry, and I've noticed that the oscillations, or, or anything where there's a circle or, or, a, or a sharp corner, there seems to be less oscillations that are, that are present, like here for example, this is the, the Z nut trap, you can see around the holes, there's no rippling effect of that that shape running across the face. And I'll turn this around so you can see this side as well and get that shimmering in the light. So yeah, I, I think moving across to the carbon fiber and saving the weight on that moving mass has benefited the print quality of the Hypercube. Um, we can't forget how good carbon fiber would look with black plastic parts as your Hypercube set. Couple that with black 2020 aluminium extrusion and the black belts running through these parts. That's a pretty stealthy hypercube you'll have there. Do any of you remember what this is? Of course you do. This is the Peon 230 quadcopter frame printed with blue ABS plastic. This is the frame that I've really been flying with up until now. It's a 230 size quadcopter, so the wheelbase from motor to motor diagonally is 230 millimeters. But what I'd like to do is move down to a smaller scale. I'd like to move down to about a 150 millimeter wheelbase. So normally I would just design and or print up a frame at about that 150 millimeter wheelbase size. But this is a double change that I'll be making. Up until now, I've been flying in just standard self-stabilize mode, which is fine if you just want to stroll around the park, but I'd like to get into freestyle, into racing, into all sorts of other areas that drone pilots are getting into. So rather than print out another frame, at least initially, I've gone out and bought a carbon fiber frame. This is the Spadger 150 size frame made of 2.5 millimeter carbon fiber on the base and 1.5 millimeter carbon fiber on the top. My intention here, at least initially, is to fly with a carbon fiber frame while I practice flying acro mode. So this is not self-stabilizing that I've been flying this in because I intend to, well, I don't intend, but I expect to crash a lot of times and I don't want to have to continue to replace arms or the frame, uh, at least initially, until I'm in an intermediate pilot. Another reason is this is quite light. For this piece of carbon fibre here, plus the top, plus you get some other accessories with it, like plastic standoffs, these are only 20 millimetres in height, and all the screws and whatnot to fix everything together. 
this entire carbon fibre set only weighs 42 grams. Where the peon frame, with all the screws and everything assembled, weighed 100 grams. So it's less than half the weight. Okay, granted it's smaller, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to match 42 grams, even if I uh, reduce or scale down the size of the peon. But that's to be determined. And to go with a new, much smaller frame, I'm having to buy new motors new cameras, new everything. Basically, I want to reduce the weight of the frame. The all-up weight will be about that 200 gram mark. So to start off with, for a motor, I've chosen the Race Star 1306 4000 kV. Bought these in a pack of four from Banggood. Only $37 or something Australian delivered. So I don't know, about 30 bucks US. So I bought four of those. They come in clockwise and anti-clockwise, so two of each. And to accompany the small frame, they require a smaller prop. So instead of a 5-inch prop that the Peon 230 uses, this is a 3-inch prop. This is a 3x3 three three two-blade. These are bullnose, so they are flat on the edges. And that's basically the maximum size of the prop uh, length that this particular frame can support. So a little 3-inch prop. To make installation a little bit easier, rather than purchasing four small ESCs to attach to the arms. I've opted to go for an all-in-one ESC. So this is four ESCs in one, 20 amps by four. This will basically stack underneath the flight controller. The motor wires will connect straight in. I won't have any connectors going into the motors here at all. Uh, this is BL Heli compatible, so I can solder all the wires up and then in the software I can reverse the direction of the motors. So this should make a, a much neater installation rather than having four external ESCs on the arms. For the live video feed, I'll be using a CCD camera. This is the HS1177. This is only 17 millimeters in height. That's going to work well with the small standoffs which separate the bottom plate to the top plate. And there's a cutout in the top plate to allow some tilting for this camera as well. For the 5.8 GHz video transmitter, I'll be using an E-Chain uh, branded one here. It's selectable in its power output between 25 milliwatt, 200 milliwatt, and 600 milliwatt. And just for an antenna at this stage, I'll just be using a, a basic dipole antenna just to save a bit of weight. And with regards to the battery, I'll be using the same batteries that I currently have and the batteries that I have been using on the Pion 230, three cell, uh, one amp Zippy Compact 35C. I'm hoping that three cell is going to be super fast with this frame. These motors are 4000 kV, which is almost double the kV of the previous motors that I had on the Peon. The Peon had the RCX 1804's 2400 kV motors. So I'm hoping with three cell plus 4000 kV that that's going to be an insane setup. Otherwise, if I need to jump up to four cell batteries, I'll need to buy a whole new set. So this is just a side project that I'll be working on over the coming weeks. I'll be documenting just the basic setup and installation. Hope to have it hovering in the next few days, and I'll let you guys know how I go.